Matt Medved here with Billboard Dance. We have a very special guest at the office today. We have Alan Walker in New York. Hey, guys. Alan's here because he's going to be performing on Fallon, uh, your most recent single, All Falls Down with Noah Cyrus. You excited? Very excited. It's, it's basically the biggest show that I'm doing here in the States or pretty much ever. And I'm very, very, very excited. We just done the rehearsals, and I, I think it's going to be super good. Very cool. And that's going to be tonight, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So everyone can tune in. Tell us a little bit about, you know, about the song, All Falls Down, and working with Noah Cyrus. What, what, what was that process like? Working with Noah Cyrus was super smooth and very easy. She, like, we, I sent her the demo, and she sang the vocals, and she absolutely killed it. Like, her vocals was the perfect match for this song. And working with her was, as I said, like very easy, and the process was very easy as well. Like everything was painless, and we had a very good time actually working on this song. And stylistically, you know, it's got it's got some of the those you know classic sort of Alan Walker elements, but it also has a like it also has a bit of a different feel too. I think more during the verses is what I was feeling. Tell tell us a little bit about how you approached it from a stylistic perspective. Well, the thing is that I really want to evolve and change my sound, and I don't really want to continue like producing everything like faded, singing to see alone, and everything. I was like, I want to evolve Alan, the sound of Alan Walker and show people that I can actually do something else than just sticking to the same sound and also do something different and also still keep the uh, old Alan Walker sound. Now, Alan, you're, you're huge globally, but you only kind of recently started really playing like big looks and big markets in the United States. And I know you're, you're coming off um, your first big tour. What was it like, kind of getting getting a, a sense for the American crowds and and the and the like major American festivals? Really, really fun. Like all the shows I've done so far here in the U.S. has been really, really cool. Like I really enjoy coming here, also to South America and. The crowd here is amazing. Like people are crazy, and uh, I love coming to all the festivals, all the gigs, all the clubs that I'm playing at, and I'm definitely looking forward to more. Yeah. Well, you have a pretty exciting one on the horizon with Coachella, uh, your Coachella debut. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, obviously you're going to have some surprises up your sleeves, but what could fans expect for that, or how are you approaching that? Well, I'm going to spend a lot of time preparing this one. It's a very special gig and uh, very meaningful for me as, as an artist and also as a person. Like, It's a very big achievement to actually get, get to be on the lineup of Coachella. And I don't know, like I'm, I'm going to try to deliver the best I can. And I hope uh, the people that's going to come there will also have a good time. That's great. Have you ever been to Coachella uh, just in attendance before? Or? No, never. It's going to be my very first time. That's the way to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we were also talking a little bit before uh, before this, and you've got an album on the way. What what can you tell us about it? Well, the album is going to be called War of Walker, and it's going to consist of about eight songs. And uh, well, Awful Stone is going to be included, and also the two next singles. And I've got a bunch of more coming on, and I'm still working on them. And I'm very, very excited for this. It's going to be like, I always feel like uh, now releasing albums, because I felt like the market has become so much streaming based. But as time has passed, like I, I've gotten so many tracks laying around, and also potential new singles. But like, they would, I think, like just getting to include them on the album is a very good thing. Absolutely. And w what does sort of an album represent for you, kind of as as an, as an artistic body of work, as opposed to you know the singles that you've been putting out? I think it's very cool because then I can also show other style projects that I've done. And uh, like for example, I have this song that's called Diamond Heart and been playing it around. And it, I would say like it's kind of like a faded 2.0. It's a collaboration with a French duo called Y and We. And uh, I think like the whole track is very soothing, very, very, I don't know, peaceful, uh, relaxing to listen to. And the vocal is amazing. And I'm very, very excited to also show this and also a lot of the other songs that's coming in along with it as well. Yeah, you know, and kind of looking back on, you, you had a really great um, past year. Um, you know, the song Tired was, was you know, a huge, a huge release for you. That Kygo remix was a big one. And I know, we, you know, we were all hanging in Miami, uh, me, you, and Kygo before, and, and you guys are actually from the same, the same town, right? From Bergen in Norway? Yeah, that's correct. What's, uh, are you, uh, did that kind of contribute to your friendship or to your bond? Or how did that remix sort of come together? I would say, like, uh, me and Kygo were, like, uh, representing Norway, and I think, like, just having that, this combination was kind of like fire, like media and all, we loved it. And also just uh, us two friends, like uh, having that combination on a song was kind of like something people wouldn't have expected. 
but like Kaigo killed this remix and I'm for, uh, ever happy very happy that he did it and also very thankful now if I recall the first time we actually met before that was at South by Southwest and you were doing a panel uh, about the intersection of electronic music and gaming and video games. Um, and I know that's an important area for you. I know you, you've spoken a lot um, in your videos and, and to your fans about uh, how before you went into music, you were very big into gaming and, and you're still plugged into the scene. Talk a little bit about um, the intersection of electronic music and gaming and what you are most excited about in that space. Well, gamers like on YouTube, for example, they're constantly looking for music to use in the videos. And that's what I've been doing as well. And giving uh, the gamers, the content creators on YouTube or other platforms, music that they can use for free without uh, getting any copyright infringement or getting demonetized for using copyrighted music is very good because it also helps you to spread your music for free. And also it give, helps them to get music that they can use in their videos without getting any problems or infringements. And just reaching out to that gaming community is a very, very, big door to a major community and I think that having that connection there with my music and also other people's music and also that community is very very important and also a very good thing. It's a very highly engaged community too, right? And I, I think you can see Alan has a very, you, you have a very engaged fan base. You can see it on your, on your social media and such. Um, how do you try to make an effort to sort of keep your fans engaged? Well, I'll try to communi communicate with them as much as possible. And uh, like I have my Snapchat public, so anyone can send me questions like uh, or whatever. And I try to, for example, talk to them as much as possible because I still want to keep that or maintain a relationship with my fans and followers. And I think that's really important to, uh, for, well, for me as an artist, to kind of like give back to my fans that's giving so much to me. Mm. Makes sense, makes sense. And uh, you know, speaking of the future, and I'll actually, well, 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 real quick, actually, I kind of want to know what what were some of the video games that you grew up playing? Uh, well, mostly Call of Duty. Like I loved the uh, Black Ops One game. Like I, I don't know, uh, I only play multiplayer and I didn't really do the campaign. But like I finished the all the fifteen procedures on two accounts because I loved the game so much. <laughs> So most mo more PC game than games than console. Is that for you? Uh, no, I'm more on console. Like I, I've, I've grown up like with all my friends on the PlayStation. So uh, that's what I ended up with it as well. Mm. And I mean, speaking of technology and the future, we were having a little chat about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency before this. Uh, you just recently kind of got into the space. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, what what got you interested? Um, what, what what do you think the potential is for the technology? Well, uh, cryptocurrency is something that's evolving, and I think it's uh, maybe the future of currency. Like, uh, everything is becoming electronic nowadays, and uh, internet and everything is taking over day by day. And seeing how cryptocurrency has been evolving so fast, like, you're seeing, uh, like, just looking back one year ago, a Bitcoin like, it was worth like $100 or something, and now, like, it's uh, over 10K. That's insane. And but not looking at that only like uh, I've read like that countries or some I don't know has been considering like releasing or their own cryptocurrency as a local currency and I think that's pretty cool because that shows like how the future is evolving and everything and it just recently like, uh, like I also tried to invest a little bit but uh, in like cryptocurrency but like haven't gotten really into it because I like, haven't had time but I was I've been considering mining but uh, yeah, I haven't gotten that into it. You have a few other things on your plate, hey? <laughs> 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 All right, and one thing I'd also you know, be curious too is, you know, um, it's been a really interesting p past year uh, for electronic music. I think we've seen a lot of um, crossover in interesting areas. How do you feel electronic music and the dance music scene has changed since you have uh, sort of risen to prominence within it? I feel like uh, more music has been going more in such down tempo uh, lately, and I think that's pretty cool because that suits my style a, a lot. And uh, and also like I feel I feel like people are making more and more emotional music, and uh, I don't know like I but I feel like I mean, the electronic dance music scene is moving in a very good direction, f and it's always consistently like coming up new genres. New genres are be becoming more popular. People are discovering new stuff and. Uh, and yeah, like I'm very excited. All right, and for you know we've had we've talked about it before, but for those who might be this might be their first time experiencing or seeing Alan Walker, and they might know your music. You know, explain the hood and the mask and everything, the whole concept. Well, the reason why I'm wearing a mask is not necessarily because I want to hide myself. 
and it's, it's just the whole image and symbol of Alan Walker and that is that anyone can be a walker and it's just to put on a hoodie and a mask and uh, and done yeah you can be a walker all right do we have uh, any are we able to do any fan questions from uh, social media is that going on or sure. cool <laughs> well, uh, I recently actually made a new account uh, on PlayStation. Like my old gamer tag was Norway ninety seven. I felt like that was kind of like weird, but but shockingly, like Alan Walker music was available. So I recently got that username on PlayStation four. Uh, so go ahead, add me, and uh, I'm on the Call of Duty World War Two. And uh, yeah, uh, just add me and we we'll play. Given the number of fan accounts you have, uh, I'm surprised no not, no one at, no one thought to uh, to book that name. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of shocked myself. <laughs> if any others. On Periscope, um, Josh asks any inspiration outside of the electronic music scene. Well, looking outside of the uh, electronic music scene, I find a lot of inspiration from movie soundtracks, and I'm a very big fan of Hans Zimmer. Like his m m art and music like it gives me so much inspiration like he has these melodies that could be really simple but they're so powerful and that's what's really important for me like because i find inspiration in those kind of melodies and they inspire me to create something I in particular something like that and i think like just finding something so simple and something so powerful is so good because it doesn't have to be complicated to be good Really timeless music. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was incredible to see him at Coachella actually last year. Yeah, I recently saw him in Oslo. That was awesome. Mm. Do we have any more from the crowd? Um, we have um, Becky asking when new music is coming out. Ooh, uh, I can't. Well, we haven't really decided a release date yet, but uh, I think we are thinking about releasing a new song. Either this month or next month, one month after that. I don't. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> <laughs> one of these months. <laughs> um, last one. We have All right. Sadu asks on Facebook, how's your 20, How was your 2017? Well, 2017 has been incredible. Uh, it's been a wild year. Like I think we did about 180 shows, and about 200 travel days, and. Uh, I don't know, like, there, there's there been so much going on. It's been a fantastic year. So much music has been put out. I've been, I've, I've met so many great fans, and I've been to so many fantastic places, experienced so many uh, different cultures and people, and uh, it's undescribable. And I've, I, it's been really, really fun, and I'm really looking forward to see what 2018 has got in hand. Very cool. Well, thank you for coming in. Everyone tune in to Fallon tonight. You can see Alan with Noah Cyrus. All falls down. All right. Thanks for coming, man. Great to see you always. Thank you for having me.